Hello, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to talk about the UK housing market and just to help things look a little bit sexier than they are I'm going to be showing you a sort of deck of slides so you have some eye candy. So here we go. The cost of the land for a property makes up from a half to two thirds of the price. Most of the UK population occupy a mere 8% of the land mass of the UK. And about 70% of land is owned by much less than 1% of the population. About two thirds of Britain's land is owned by aristocrats, the state and other large institutions. For example, the Forestry Commission has about 2.6 million acres of land under its control. The royal family, collectively over 750,000 acres, and the Ministry of Defence has about 600,000 acres where it can uh, train its soldiers. So how do we get to this situation? Well, about a thousand years ago, there was something called the Norman Conquest, where the Normans came over from Normandy and essentially uh, killed off and displaced the existing Anglo-Saxon aristocracy and took possession of Britain. The Normans were basically descended from the Vikings and when they took over Britain they divided the territory between the sort of favoured Norman aristocracy who inherit much of the land down to this present day. And the arist aristocratic class sell off the land to developers for hundreds of thousands of pounds per acre the landed aristocracy also received billions of pounds in subsidies and grants from tax revenue each year. A consequence of the shortage of available land for development in the UK is that the cost of land is very inflated, which of course pushes up the cost of labour and everything else. And this inhibits business and housing development and it promotes economic stagnation, unemployment and poverty. So why aren't more homes being built? Well obviously there is this shortage of land and according to the NHBC Foundation there are major barriers to extra housing supply because of financial difficulties and the planning system. Also localism in relation to both planning and building standards causes complications as well so you can't just have a sort of a standard blueprint for development you have to work with local authorities all the time to understand what their different rules are so regulation and bureaucracy remain a source of frustration for the developers the highly inflated costs of development created by this bureaucracy also mean that property development is a monopolistic market this lack of competition therefore also inflates the costs of purchasing a property. So there's also a conflict between the different political classes, between the profitability of development and the protection of the status quo. So let's take a little look at this uh, political bun fight. Developers want to construct millions of new homes and they also would like planning restrictions loosened to make that process easier and cheaper and less risky. And behind this drive for new development are the wealth elites, the landowners, the developers and the bankers. They all stand to benefit from all this extra property on the market. And it would also, for the general population, encourage economic growth, employment, a higher quality of life for the new homeowners, new purchasers, being able to move out of older properties and it would lower property prices as well, um, allowing uh, younger people and those with less money to spend to enter onto the property market. Now against this we have I think essentially the middle classes. These are people who are already homeowners and invested in the present market uh, the landlords who have people renting their accommodation and stand to lose them if there's a lot of new 
property development and together this block of political interest I think primarily use the green argument and they fearmonger about the UK being sort of concreted over and urbanized and so on and so forth uh, but the reality is that building three or four million new homes would really only increase the built area of the UK from where it is presently around 8% to about 10% so we're really not talking about uh, converting the UK into a concrete jungle it's quite a ridiculous uh, allegation that seems to be coming from the green side of the fence I think what the middle classes are really worried about is the depreciation of existing property values should there be a surge in the supply of homes also the loss of rental income for landlords and possibly foreclosures as those incomes decline and people have to sell their properties and also a lot of these middle classes will be worried about new development on adjacent land to the homes they already own and again the effect this will have on depreciating their existing property value and lowering quality of life. The property market as it stands is hugely influenced by state market manipulation. For example, we have these huge landowners like the Forestry Commission, rather secretive, and it just produces uh, wood and other natural materials. It was set up to supply wood uh, during periods of warfare, and now it sort of sells itself as a, a green and uh, countryside protecting government agency. Now, of course, the aristocracy have essentially inherited stolen property so they are receiving a subsidy in the form of the policing of their land originally of course they would have had to protect uh, their land against repopulation and poaching and other forms of encroachment but now they benefit from having free policing and protection from the legal system that they created through the socialized police force and of course having made an absolute steal of the British land they now declare conquest illegal so you know don't expect at any time to be able to go and put the sword or spear to the aristocracy their legal system only accepts and forgives the aristocracy's thefts and murders the banks of course are highly government controlled and regulated they're cartelized they're given bailout monies, uh, securitization of the deposits, uh, a massive amount of regulatory capture, so not just anyone can competitively set up a better bank. And they also centrally fix the interest rate, and they have it very low at the moment to stimulate economic activity, and this also helps to push housing prices up. Then there's state subsidies to single families, uh, low paid workers and of course social housing. Restrictive practices, the planning permission and building regulations, these have a huge effect on dampening the supply side and the combined effect of all of these state uh, market manipulations is an effect to inflate the housing prices and to sort of create this bubble and ever, ex ever increasing uh, prices for houses. So that is the crazy that the state has created. Let's have a quick look at what free market solutions might look like. And here's Charlie's house. He built it himself on land that his parents purchased. And as you can see, it's, it's built out of local materials, simple materials. It's very green, involves a lot of recycling essentially. And it's of course very cost effective so that you can afford to pay for this without a lifetime of debt and it also doesn't require a lot of heavy equipment to install so all around it's, it's a very sustainable uh, and environmentally friendly form of housing so what it means is no money for the landowners no money for the developers and no money for the banksters of course the ability for ordinary people to solve their own housing programs in these innovative 
and environmentally friendly ways is a threat to the middle classes. Again, people who already own properties, they're going to see their properties depreciate in value. So really this kind of solution is very unpopular with a lot of incredibly influential people. And this is why the political classes will block any kind of solution like this. And what the local government say is that it's harmful to the rural character of the locality. Um, now of course this is a completely subjective opinion. Uh, lots of people might actually like this building or enjoy looking at it. But nevertheless, uh, these local government uh, decision-making bodies are full of the local population and people invested in properties. So they, they have vested interests to protect. So don't expect things to change anytime soon. Thanks for listening. I uh, hope you got the point with that one. Uh, hope to see you again in the next programme.